So I had a character in my head that I wanted to bring to life using clay. Only one problem. I'd never made a sculpture before. Here's how that went. So I knew from all the YouTube videos I watched, I needed to start with an armature and then wrap the clay around all that. And from there, I just needed to kind of like bolt the body out with the clay. And make sure that I uh, focused on the important parts. And I figured I should add a shirt onto the character. I know, I know. An anthropomorphic animal on the internet. With clothes? I didn't think it was possible either, but here we are. So the shirt mostly went fine until it didn't. But I fixed that and we were able to move on to the boots. For something so simple looking, you'd think it would have been easier for me, but uh, I struggle here a lot. So I wanted to pretend I was good at what I was doing and uh, add some wrinkles to make it look slightly more professional. And this actually didn't turn out as bad as I thought it would. At this point I realized that things were still looking a little too flat for my liking. So I cut out a piece of fabric from a glove that I definitely didn't steal from work and tried a couple different methods to give some texture to the shirt. Some of them worked a lot better than others. After finishing that, it was time to put everything in the oven to bake and get the paws done. I started off with a ball of clay that I kind of shaped into a little mitten-like shape. And then I cut out a somewhat heart-shaped thing for the pads. And most importantly, the beans. And then I made another one of those when I was done with all that, and I put them on the sculpture. Uh, disregard the claws. I tried to make some of those and uh, didn't turn out that great. And then I got a new camera! Which led to some really blurry shots for a while until I figured out that putting it in manual focus was going to be easier for the task I was doing than autofocus. Way towards the end of filming. Sorry. So I moved on to making the tail. For that I just took out armature wire and covered it in cosplay. I ended up really liking the cosplay a lot better actually, than maybe because I was using Sculpey 3 though. I just liked that it was a lot more firm. And I probably would have used it on the whole project if I had got it earlier. And then I had to put the tail in where it, uh, well, where, where tails go. And to start on the head, I just kind of took a ball of foil and crumpled it until it looked more like a cat shape head. And I guess it's a good time to mention that I'm kind of using my two cats as a reference here. Mostly a Castillo. Once I was done shaping the foil, I was able to put a layer of cosplay over it. And I kind of just spent forever shaping that. Luckily for you though, I can uh, speed the footage up. I did eventually decide I didn't like the way the little flap things on the side of the head there were looking, so I got rid of those. For the ears, I took a bit of the clay and kind of made them into a Dorito shape. And I put those in place. And the nose was another struggle spot. I don't know why it took me forever to get a shape I like, but it did. I ended up fixing that mostly off camera, honestly. And then I added a little cat mouth. Now I had to make a couple eye holes. Then I got distracted while I was working on that and went back to the mouth because reasons, I guess. And for the second eye, I did something a little bit different, but it was mostly the same process. Then I took a ball stylus to both of the eyes and the ears to give it a little bit of shape in there. Now at this point, I was going to try to make the eyes from UV resin, watercolor paint, and paper, but I realized most of those things can't really go in the oven. So I, I, I'll figure that out later. For now I moved on to the eyebrows. I was kind of going for a determined look. 
Then I finished up some final shaping on the face and just tried to make it look a little more angular. And finally got that attached to the body. So next I wanted to do the hair, but uh, I had tried to do something for the hair earlier and completely failed at that. I ended up hating it. So I just kind of etched some lines in instead, which I think turned out okay, honestly. But if anyone has any tips for me to do that in the future better, or really any of the things that I've done that you think could be done better, but let me know. And I figured while I was doing the hair, I should probably put some whisker dots in where the whiskers are gonna go. But what I didn't expect was that I was gonna somehow use my big old clumsy hands and break the boot while I was doing that. You know, the boots that I struggled so hard to make earlier. But I ended up fixing that pretty easily actually, so it wasn't too big of a deal. Then I just had to add some hair texture to the tail and some of the other places on the body that I completely forgot to film. Look, I'm new at all this, okay? Just give me a break. For the next layer of clothing, I decided to give him a mage's robe. You know, because he's a mage. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how much I got this to look like fabric, honestly. I decided the sleeves needed a little bit of cleaning up, and I tried to crack those off, but uh, that didn't really work at first, so I brought out the pliers. And then I just made the hood by stacking some rolls on each other. For the whiskers, I decided to cut up some paintbrush bristles. I saw this somewhere on YouTube. I'm not really sure where I saw it, honestly. I'm gonna try to find that. In fact, I'm gonna try to make a whole playlist of videos that I use to learn to do some of this stuff. So look for that on my channel, I guess. And after many attempts with my not at all delicate, super shaky hands, I finally got some whiskers in place. Then I figured I could use some wrinkles to make the fabric look even more fabricy. I tried to use the brush to bend the clay a bit, but uh, you know, that would have been too easy. And after I fixed that, I added some more wrinkles in other places. And then I baked it again, except this time, it cracked. So I figured that shouldn't be too hard to fix, I'll just throw some cosplay on top of it and bake it again, except that made it worse. So I ended up bringing out the modeling paste that I used in my first video, and that actually seemed to do the trick. You know, once I figured out how to do that. So with that done, I wanted to move on to giving him a weapon. Well, a book that he uses to do his magic. You know what I mean. Now there were a couple ways I probably could have done this, but I decided to use some wood that I got from a hardware store near me. Once I was done cutting it out, I covered it with cosplay. It didn't quite work out the way I planned, but I adapted. Persevered. With that done, I needed to make some pages, which I definitely didn't struggle with at all. And after I baked that, I realized that the outside kind of looked a little 
too worn. I mean, it's supposed to look a little well used, but not that well used. So I pulled out the modeling paste to fix it up. Then it was time to start painting. Hit the sculpture and book with a layer of primer because I'd seen other people doing it. I don't really know if it's necessary. And then I started painting the book. And after I got all the paint done and it dried, I put some brown wash on it to kind of make it look a little more archaic. And finally onto the sculpture itself. I had to do a few layers of the blue paint that I was using here because it was cheap paint. Then I dry brushed on a lighter blue color as well and uh, also a dark blue paint, but I forgot to film that, so... And then I wanted to line the edges of the fabric with the brown paint. And then out of nowhere, I kind of also decided to use a gold paint. And I tried to apply that with a toothpick. And uh, that went very poorly. So I just got a smaller brush instead. And then I painted all the fur spots with a creamy white color. And then lightly brushed on an orange color to make it look like my Flame Point Siamese cat, Castiel. Making sure to pay special attention to the ears. and then a light pink for his nose, lips, and paws. And then it was time to give him some beautiful blue eyes. This whole part wasn't as stressful as I expected. But then I had to add the pupils. And I kind of felt like this could genuinely ruin the whole thing if I messed it up. So, quite a bit of pressure. But I did it, and it actually turned out well. This next part though. Okay, so I had a plan for the eyeballs. I wanted to drip resin into the holes that I made and make it like a nice globular shape. But I messed the first eye up. I put way too much in and it kind of started flowing over the edges and I had to dab it with a paper towel. It was a mess. So at this point I'm like, do I do something else for the second eye? So I struggled with that for a while trying to figure out what I could do. But ultimately I calmed down and just kind of did it again the same way, but better. And that worked out a lot better and kind of did have the spherical shape I was going for this time. With all that done, I was ready to attach the book to the sculpture. Yeah, so I used some super glue to get it in place. Eventually. And then I was able to move on to the base. In my first video, I'd used an Ikea cork thing. And that turned out pretty well, and I figured I could use it here again. So I covered that with a layer of Mod Podge. And then a layer of Mod Podge and white paint. 
and then another layer of Mod Podge and white paint, and another layer of Mod Podge and white paint. And it's supposed to kind of look like a nice wintry scene, because it's currently winter when I'm making this. I don't know when it's getting released. And to make the base a little more three-dimensional, I wanted to add some snow. My first thought here is, oh, I'll just run over to the craft store and grab some snow flocking. Except I forgot it was Christmas time. And they sold out. So then I just found a recipe on the internet. And it turned out really poorly. And I hated it. So I settled for my trusty modeling paste, which I didn't actually expect to use at all in this project, but it's saved me three times now, so... It kind of starts out looking like forbidden frosting. But it ends up getting the job done, so we're good. So the goal here was to make it look like the magic he was generating forced the snow away in a circular pattern. It's not really a powerful spell or anything. He was one of the first people to study and experiment with magic, so he didn't really know too much yet. And with that, the sculpture was done. Thanks so much for being part of my journey. See you next time.